afternoon today. Uh, I want to start off uh, asking for any questions on Project 3. We'll go over the description now for about, I don't know, the first five or ten minutes of class, and then we'll go back and continue and finish up syntax analysis. Uh, any questions before we start? So the first section here, right, looking at the grammar above here. So S 
next can be separated into a non-terminal list followed by a rule list. So that would be this first list is the list of non-terminals. So that's exactly what um, the semantics specify is the first input section is the list of non-terminals in your grammar. So note here that we're not, there's no conventions about if it's uppercase, it's a non-terminal, or lowercase, it's not a non-terminal, it doesn't matter. If it's an ID in the non-terminal list, then it's a non-terminal. So this would be the non-terminal list, and then following that up to the double equal sign is all of the rules. And each rule is an ID, an arrow, and some list to the right-hand side, uh, followed by an ending hash. And each of these define one of the production rules in our grammar. So these define that a declaration produces ID list colon ID, and ID list produces ID, ID list one. ID list one produces here this empty, yeah, represents epsilon, so it produces nothing. And ID list one also produces comma ID, ID list one. And we know we're done because we've seen the double equal. Double hash, yes. Questions? So one thing should be, well, how do we know? So we specify the non-terminals, right? The non-terminals is the first input section. How do we specify the terminals? Everything else, yeah, exactly. So if you see anything on a right-hand side that is not a non-terminal, it's not a non-terminal, which is a terminal. And so here we've kind of broken it down and represented it as the non-terminals are here of this input, uh, the actual representation, the grammar representation of this input grammar, and all the terminals. And I note that white space doesn't matter at all here, so don't think that you can rely on each line being a rule or something like that. So this is a just played around with the white space. It's exactly the same test case, exactly the same example. Um, questions? Okay, implementation. Yeah, is that a question? No. Okay. Uh, so implementation, same way we've been doing projects up till now. So follow the direction. Got to run on CentOS. I think by now we're all familiar with that. Uh, okay, requirements. So you're going to calculate either the first sets or the follow sets of the grammar, depending on the the command line grammar that's passed. Uh, so we've all we've gone over first sets, we've gone over follow sets. We're going to go over an example again today. So Hopefully it's not a new concept. Um, so yeah, you just gotta follow the instructions. So when outputting the first sets, you're gonna output them in this order. Um, if so, here's the example first set output from the previous example. We say the first set of a declaration is an ID. First set of ID one is epsilon and comma. Uh, the first set of ID list is ID. Questions on first sets? Follow sets, follow sets are very similar. You're gonna calculate the follow sets. Uh, the one thing is if end of file is in the uh, in the follow set, we're gonna represent it with the dollar sign. So for that example grammar, when it's run with the command line argument of two to output the follow sets, it's going to output the follow sets of declaration is the dollar sign, follow sets of ID list one is a colon, follow set of ID list is a colon. Okay, and this is the breakdown, so in case you want to know what, so in case you want to know what test, so you should be able to go very easily from submission to test cases to your grade. Um, and so for this assignment, there's no restrictions. As long as you're using C or C, we don't really care. And you're, as we've been going over in this class, your output has to match exactly. If it doesn't match, it doesn't count. Questions? All right.
a very long and complicated context-free grammar that specifies an email address. So something that should be very simple. Um, so this is taken from an actual real open source project that people use in production that's by a real company. Um, so I simplified it so we could use it as an example for this class. So there's, I think, five non-terminals here. So one is a quoted <coughs> string, so a string delimited by double quotes. Um, one is an atom, which uh, the specifics here we don't really need to get into. You can go look at the code if you really care about it. Um, a dot atom, so an atom with a dot in it, which is something you might want to use for, let's say, to specify a domain name, right? So domain name is usually something dot something else. Uh, quoted string act. So this is a token I had to kind of inject in here to get the example to work. Uh, this is a quoted string followed by the at symbol. So it would be, you can consider it kind of as the first part of an email address, maybe. Uh, a dot atom at. So dot atom at would be a dot atom followed by the at sign, right? So you can just, you can do this, you can make your tokens, right? You can just add a new symbol onto the end of the token, and now that token's going to match because it's going to be the longest prefix matching. Um, so that's what I did there. Questions on those? Non terminals. I mean, for what we're, our purposes, Specifically right now, we're going to calculate first set, follow set, then write a recursive, uh, pred a predictive recursive descent parser. So as far as in terms of what the tokens actually are, it doesn't really matter, but these are real tokens that you, that you can translate into a regular expression. OK, so at the very high level, our first, our starting production rule here, we have an address is either a name address or an address specification. And so, then we're just going to break these down and define all these rules. So I kind of got rid of, I want to say about a third. Is this giving some feedback? Yeah, a little bit. All right, I'll try turning it down. All right, how about now? Better? Maybe? We'll see. OK. Uh, so we have, so our next rule is going to be a name address goes to either a, a, a display name followed by an angle address or an ang just an angle address. So this would be a name address here is either going to be, so display name, as we saw in that, that example, is some string beforehand where the email address is in brackets. Um, so if you go into your Gmail and you look at people's uh, emails, that's actually how it represents it, is their name usually in double quotes followed by angle brackets with the actual email address. Okay, and we'll, we'll see. So a display name is some word followed by a display name list. And a display name list is a word followed by a display name list or an empty string. So display name is going to be one or more words. We'll see what a word is. So angle address, very simply, it's a left angle bracket followed by an address specification followed by a right angle bracket. And so an address specification is, is either going to be a dot atom at followed by a domain, or a quoted string at followed by a domain. Right, so this is actually including, so you can see we've like included that at sign here in this definition. And so a domain is just a dot atom, and a word is either an atom or a quoted string. So uh, an atom you just think of as letters, numbers. A quoted string is a string in double quotes. Uh, questions on this grammar?
This one, dot atom at. Which one? So this one, do, so domain is a dotted atom. It just means a atom with a, like it has to have a period, a dot somewhere inside that atom. That's the only difference between those two. Yeah? Here are a couple examples. Okay. So a couple examples would be, I'm going to have to go back, let's see, I think. Okay, so we basically want to match all of these examples. So, for instance, uh, the left side was like a quoted string at, so that's what this quote CSE space 340 quote at sign, that would be a quoted string at, quoted string at. Uh, and the same with, so this last example here is an example of where you have some, this word list, right? So here's a word followed by a word. Uh, and then followed, and a word is either a uh, quoted string or an atom. So here's an atom, a quoted string, and then a left angle bracket, an email address, and then a right angle bracket. Does that make sense? Okay, so yeah, that's where we got all that there. Yeah, so a word's either an atom or a quoted string. So in that last example, we had a the display name was two, two words, one with an atom was a quoted string, followed by uh, a angle address, where an angle address was a left bracket, an address specification, a right bracket. And I've actually gotten rid of all of the, um, the white space here, because that was another thing that was in their actual grammar. And they also have, um, they had to have special cases for Unicode characters too, so uh, theirs was very complicated. Uh, more questions on this grammar? All right, so this shows up on tests, and it's like calculate first and follow sets of this grammar. Everyone would be able to do that, right? I hope so, because we're going to go over it today. But if you can't do it like, on this exact grammar, that's not good. OK, so now the first step we want to do, right, we want to write a uh, re predictive recursive descent parser. The first thing we need to do is we need to show that this grammar actually supports a predictive parser. And so to do that, we need to calculate both first and follow sets. So we're going to put the, so I'm doing this a little bit differently, so I put the grammar rules up here on the upper left, and we're going to kind of go through this one by one, we're not going to show the exact rules, so this should be hopefully this more of a refresher of how to do first sets, um, but we can kind of do this as a group, so. Uh, okay, so we want to, we start right with the initials, <coughs> the initial first sets of every single set to be the empty set, All right, so that's what we set in this column, and we're going to keep doing our rules, calculating first sets, until these first sets don't change. So we want to calculate the first set of address, right? So it's the starting, it's the starting on terminal in our grammar. Uh, so what's the first set of the address? Where do we look first? Calculating first set. So we want to raise No, we just want to mumble. Which one of these rules do we look, like, look at when we want to calculate these production rules. First one. Yeah. First one. Yeah, the first one, right? So when we're calculating first sets, we want to look at the non-terminal we're interested in here, address, and we're going to look at what does address produce. So where address is on the left-hand side. So we're going to look at the first rule here, and then we're going to say, okay, well, what first set rules apply? So number three, I think. So number one is uh, if x is a non-terminal, the first set of x is if x is a terminal is the second thing x. And the second one is the first set of x where x is epsilon, it's the second thing epsilon. Uh, the third one would be take the first symbol on each of the production rules, on the production rules, the leftmost symbol, add its first set to address its first set. Right? So we look here, we say, okay, there's two rules here. Address produces name address, and address produces address specification. So we take the first set of name address, and then we're going to add it minus epsilon to the first set of address. So we look at our table, we see the first set of name address is empty set, so we take epsilon from it, add it to the first set of address. And then we say, well, can we move on? Okay, we've gone all the way through this. Does rule five apply? Right? Is there an epsilon in every in the first set of every symbol on the right-hand side? No, because we know in name address, right, it's an empty set. There's no epsilon in there. Uh, so we're done with that. And by the same reasoning, address specification is the first symbol on the right-hand side. So we're going to add 
its first set to address's first set. When we look at address specification, it's the empty set. We take out epsilon, we add it there. We can kind of skip that part. So nothing changed, right? So we, we added, we went through, we plugged all the rules in, we added the first sets there, but there's nothing there yet, so we didn't add it. Okay. Name address, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at which rule here? You can say it. They hold up your hand. Two. Counting from the top, one, two. Right, we're, we're tagging the first set. We care about the rule of the non terminal that we're interested in is on the left hand side. So here we're going to look at name address. We see name address has two, rule, two production rules here. So we take the first set of display name and add it to the, subtract epsilon from it, add it to the first set of name address. So we say display name has nothing in it. And then we say, do we go on to the next symbol? Yes? Yes. Why yes? This or that, and this, you have the ah, first set of that. I guess I should say, do we go on to angle address by applying rule four? No, 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 no. no, because there's no epsilon, exactly. There's no epsilon in this way. Okay. So then we go on to the next rule. And so we add the first set of angle address to the first set of name address. And it's nothing, so we get nothing. But we still do it anyway, so we make sure that we know the rule. OK, now we look at display name list. And here, once again, we have two rules. So we're going to look at here, one, two, three, four. Right, rule four here? Yeah. Got a question? You're on. Okay, well. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So which rule do we apply? We can set this up. Rule two. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to add the first set of word to the first set of display name list. There's nothing in the first set of word. And then we say, do we move on to the next symbol? No, because there's no epsilon in the first set of words. And then we look at the second rule, and we say display name list goes to epsilon. Now here, okay, we'll do this very mechanically the very first time, and then we'll hopefully not do this again. Um, so we look at this, we say, okay, rule two applies. There's a first symbol here, right? Take the first set of that symbol, add it to the first set of display name list. So it's the first set of epsilon. It's the second containing epsilon, right? We're applying rule two, so technically we're we remove epsilon from that first set, so we get the empty set. And then we add the empty set into the first of the display name list. Okay. Then we say, well, does rule four apply? No, because there's no other symbol after this, right? We've reached the end of the symbols. And then we say, we see if we can apply rule five. We say, in, in all the symbols on this right-hand side rule, do they have epsilon in there? Yes, right? So first set, here it's epsilon. First set of epsilon is epsilon. So now that's when we actually add epsilon to the first set of display name list. So this is just to kind of verify that the rules make sense. There's no special case here for the fact that there's an epsilon here. So when you're writing your programs to do it, it doesn't matter. It's going to follow that same, same steps, same uh, rules in sequence. Uh, but you, as a human, you can see, okay, well, it's clearly it's going to epsilon. That means there has to be an epsilon in the first set of display name list. And it goes like that. Yeah. It doesn't really matter right now since all of our sets are empty. But as we go and we keep on adding more elements to the first sets or the follow sets, I think you mentioned last week that order matters, even though technically in sets order doesn't matter. So, oh, I, I, in my examples and in my slides, the order inside the sets will be within the order that we add the elements. And that's like our homework or our project. On the homework of the project, well, so on the on your homework it doesn't matter. In general, order of sets doesn't matter. But for grading purposes for project three, the output does matter because it's specified very particularly in the description. That's really funny. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there will be an order there, it's gotta be sorted in a certain way. So did you say we did not add epsilon with the rule two? Correct, because rule two, right, is we take the first set of that first symbol, then subtract epsilon from it, then add that result to the first set of it. Uh, yeah, that's, and I hope that didn't confuse anyone because that's just, we're just mechanically applying these rules and saying that, oh yeah, if you apply rules two and then five here, you add epsilon to the first set of display name list. So there's no, nothing special about really epsilon. Okay, so after we've done this, then we've calculated that uh, 
display name list, the first set of display name list is the set containing epsilon. And then we look at angle address. So here we're going to look at which rule is it? Actually, lock out the five. Five, five. Okay, so we look at display name list. We're going to act, or sorry, we're going to look at angle address. We're going to apply rule three. So we're going to add the first leftmost symbols first set minus epsilon to angle addresses first set. And so that symbol here is the less than bracket, or the less than symbol, the angle bracket. So we're going to add that with the first set of the angle bracket. The angle bracket, yeah. So we're going to take epsilon from there, add it. Um, and then we're going to ask, does rule four apply? Can we move on to address specification? No, because there's no epsilon in the first set of the left bracket. And so we say, okay, we're done. So now we know that the left angle bracket is in the first set of the angle address non-terminal. Then we look at address specification. And we say, okay, so there's two rules here. So we're going to look at this production rule. We're going to say, okay, let's apply rule three. Let's take whatever the leftmost symbol is. Add that to first set minus epsilon to the first set of the address specification. So we look here, we say, okay, what's the first set of dot atom at? It's a, non, it's a terminal, so it's the second thing, dot atom at. So we take epsilon from that, add it to address specification. And we say, do we go on to domain? No, because there's no epsilon in there. Uh, there's no epsilon in this first set. And so then we say we're done with this rule, and we go on to the next one. So we add the leftmost symbol here, quoted string at. We add that first set to the first set of address specification. And then we, once again, we say, do we move on to domain by trying to apply rule four? No, so we're done there. And so we say, okay, so the first set of address specification is uh, dotted atom act and quoted string act. And we look at domain, so domain should be very easy, right? So apply rule three, DA, DA is a terminal, so we just add the second thing DA. Uh, dotted at. And then for word, word is also very similar. So we look at atom, we add it, we look at quoted string, we add it. Uh, okay, so we've gone through it once, and then now that we've gone through it once, then we ask ourselves, do we stop? No. No, why? Things have changed. Things have changed, yes. Good, okay, so then we start again at the, at the top, and we look at address, and we say, okay, well, the first set of address is, I'm gonna, for each of these rules, I'm going to add the leftmost symbol, right? So here it's name address. I'm going to add the first set of name address minus epsilon to the first set of address. The first set of name address here is nothing, so that doesn't add anything. Yeah. Real quick, why, yes. is, why is domain to dot atom um, rule three rather than rule one? Um, so rule three always says so rules one and two should <coughs> define right. the first set of a not of a terminal. Rule one says the first set of a terminal is the set containing that terminal. Okay. That, that's why, yeah. And then rule two is, is the same thing with epsilon. Okay. Yeah. So just supposing that address went to name address and only name address, and epsilon was an element of the first set of name address, mm -hmm. um, do we still want to get rid of epsilon? What do you mean get rid? Yes, you, so you, you always do that every time, right, when applying, I think it's rule three, rule three and four, you always do that. And then you say, if I've gone through all of the symbols and all of them produce, have epsilon in their first set, then I add epsilon. So if the address were the last one, the only one, you also the last one? Exactly, yes. So yes, if there was an epsilon in name address, then we then we look here and we'd say, okay, it's all of the symbols on the right-hand side have epsilon in their first sets, therefore now we can add epsilon to the first set of address. Okay, so looking at address, we look at name address. Name address doesn't have anything. We look at address specification, and so we add DAA, DSA minus epsilon to the first set of address. Then we say, okay, there's no more symbols after this, so rule four can't apply, and then we say, does rule five apply? No, because there's no epsilon in the first set of address specification. Therefore, we know we can't apply rule five. And so we add a DAA, QSA. Then we look at name address, and we're going to add display name. Well, display name is the empty set, so now I'm going to go a little bit faster. Uh, the 
name address, we're going to do angle address. So angle address here is the left bracket, so we're going to add that. Um, so we're going to get the set containing the left angle bracket. For display name, we're going to look at, we're going to add the first set of word minus epsilon. So word is atom and quotient string. So we're going to add that. We're going to see that none of the other rules apply. So we add that there. Okay, so then with display name list, so we already have epsilon, we kind of already carried that over. And then we have the first set of word. So the first set of word is atom and quotient string. And so we add that in. And so we're going to get epsilon, atom, quotient string. And that's going to be our set there. Angle address is not going to change. Kind of maybe easy to look at that and verify yourself. You can still go through all the calculations. Um, address specification is also not going to change. And domain, name of domain and word. Which kind of makes sense if you look at it because each of the rules has a terminal at the leftmost symbol, so there's no way we're going to add epsilon or anything else. Questions on that run through? Are we done? Oh, we keep doing it. Okay, so we do this one more time and we look at address and we say add name address and address specification. So, name address has the first set is the left bracket, so we're going to have to add the left bracket to this. We can look at address specification, and it has uh, QAA, QSA. Um, so then we're going to add, effectively add the left angle bracket here. Uh, then for name address, we're going to say add display name. Display name is atom and quoted string, and we're going to add angle address. Uh, angle address is here, the left one, so we're going to add atom and quoted string here. Uh, display name doesn't change because word didn't change, so you can think about it that way. Uh, display name list is going to be the same. Angle address is going to be the same. Address specification domain is work. Okay, are we done? No, we have to do it one more time. All right, it's very easy. You just keep plugging, chugging, using the same rules, apply it over and over again. Okay, so now we look at address and we say name address is going to work. Uh, so we add the first set of name address, which is left bracket, uh, less than symbol, add a quoted string. We're going to add that to address. Uh, so that does actually change address. We're going to go through, hopefully see that none of these change, unless I made a mistake, in which case someone here should let me know. And we say, do we have to stop? No, we have to do it one more time because we still haven't, we made a change to address. Uh, so I'm going to go through it one more time and hopefully Nothing changes because I've run out of columns in my table. Um, so, good. We have no more room here. Uh, and so we've gone all the way through, we've applied all the rules, and we you can see the, the sets in each of the columns here are exactly the same. So now we have no more, um, we don't need to calculate first sets anymore. So these are the first sets of all the string, of all the non terminals in our grammar. Questions on that? Uh, yeah? So you said for address spec that we got. For address spec, yeah, uh, yes. That's a correction rule, right? Even though um, technically the terminal. Oh, so I, I guess I should clarify. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're looking at production rule six. Yeah. We're applying first set rule three. Okay. So first set rule three says take the leftmost symbol, right? And whatever the first set of the leftmost symbol is. Take that minus epsilon from that and add it to the first set of address specification. And then we say, okay, well, it's the first set of DAA or dotted atom at. And then the first rule tells us that the first set of a, of a terminal is the set containing that terminal. So we apply rule one to get that. Okay, questions? All right, so we calculated the first set. Ooh, yeah. Can you specify the terminals and non-terminals in, in this one because it's difficult to differentiate from one's other terminals? Uh, non-terminals are uppercase and terminals are lowercase. So if it's in here, it's, oh, it's a terminal, right? And uh, if it's on the left-hand side here, it's a non-terminal. Okay, question, more questions? First sets? I mean first sets? If everybody did the homework correctly then? Yeah. Going to? So for a name adder, say instead of display name, we would have display name list. Mm -hmm. If that 
we look and we see, okay, it's the less than symbol. So we add that to the, to the follow set of display name. Cool. And we don't have any more symbols there, so there's nothing else to possibly go on to, so the last rule does not apply. And then we say, okay, well, display name doesn't exist anywhere else, so we're done there. And so the follow set of display name is the less than symbol. Okay, display name list. Where is that used? Three and four, right? So we look at all the right-hand sides, we say, okay, it's in rules three and four. And we say, okay, can we apply rule two? Is this in list the last element on this production rule? Yes. Yes. So then we add the first set of what? Is what? Display name. Display name. Yeah, so then we add the first set of display name to the first set of display name list. And the first set of display name, or sorry, uh, we have to follow, yes, thank you. We have the follow set of display name to the follow set of display name list, uh, which would be the less than symbol. So we're going to add that to the follow set of display name list. And then we say, OK, well, there's no symbols after this. So the other rules four and five don't apply. Uh, and then we go to the next occurrence of the display name list here, the fourth production rule. And so we say, is it the last element here? Yes. Yes. Uh, so we have the follow set of display name list and the follow set of display name list. Writing to itself doesn't do anything. Uh, and then we say there's no symbols after this, so we're all done with our follow rules. Uh, so the follow set of display name list is going to be a less than symbol. Okay. Uh, angle address. Angle address. Uh, where is it used? Was that rule two? Rule, uh, rule one? Rule two? Just rule two. Okay. Well, just rule two. Something that's kind of tricky, so you got to make sure you match those up correctly. Okay, so we say, does rule two apply? Is it the last, not uh, the last symbol in this production rule? Yes. 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 So then we have the follow set of name address to the follow set of angle address. So we're going to add the end of file to the follow set of ang angle address, and that's the only place that it is. There's no other symbols, so we're done there. All right, address specification. How many places? Where is address specification? Rule one? Five. Rule five? I should have numbered these. It's been easier. Okay, yeah, rule one and rule five. So we look at rule one and we say, is it the last element of this list? Yes. 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 So then we add what? The follow set of what? Address. address to the follow set of address specifications. So we're going to add the end of file. And there's no other symbols here, so we can't apply to the other rules. Then we look uh, here at address at Rule five, we said. Uh, so we look at address specification here, and we say, okay, does rule two apply? Is it the last symbol in this production rule? No. No. Then we ask, does rule three apply? From this symbol to the end of the end of the rules, is an epsilon in all of the first sets there? No. 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 Why? Yes. Okay. Good. So why do you say? Why do you say a lot? You're saying. The first set of the angle bracket. Yeah, the first set of the angle bracket here is the angle bracket, so there's no epsilon there, so rule three doesn't apply. And we say, okay, let's apply rule four, so add the next symbol's first set minus epsilon to the follow set of address specification. So here we just look at the next symbol, and it doesn't matter that it's a terminal or non-terminal, right? We just add whatever the next symbol is. Here it's the greater than symbol. Uh, so we add the greater than symbol to the follow set of address specification. So here we have end of file and greater than symbol. And then there's no epsilon in that symbol, so rule five doesn't apply. And so we're done there. Okay, domain. So where is domain used? Like just rule six. Rule six in two places. Um, so we look, we'll take the first one, the left, uh, this one. So we say, does rule two apply to the last symbol? Yes. So we add the follow set of address specification to the follow set of domain. Uh, the follow set of address specification is end of file and greater than symbol. So we add that, then we look at the next rule. We can hopefully see that it's essentially the same situation, right? We have domain is the last symbol in this production rule, and so we add the follow set of address specification to the follow set of domain. So it's gonna be the same thing there. All right, then with Word, so we have to figure out all the places where word is used, so is it in three and four? Yeah? Here and here? Anywhere else? I don't think so. Okay. So then we ask, let's take this first one, production rule three. So we 
we asked, does rule two apply? Is it the last rightmost element here? No. Symbol here? No. But then we ask rule three, from this symbol to the end of the production rule, are there, is there epsilon in all the first sets of those symbols? Yes. 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 So there's only, so there's one symbol, right? It's display name list. When we look, is epsilon in the first set of display name list? We say yes, it is. So we can apply rule three where we add the first set of this, uh, thank you. We have the follow set of display name list, the follow set of word. So we apply rule three. Uh, then we say, okay, there's rule, let's apply rule four. What's the next thing right after display, right after word? Display name list, right? So we're gonna add the first set minus epsilon of display name list to the follow set of word. So the first set of display name list is uh, epsilon atom put in string. We take epsilon out, we add those two to the first, to the follow set of display name, of word. Okay, now we say, are we done? No, no, do we have to look at this rule, rule four. So we take, so then we ask if rule two apply? No. No, right, so it's not at the end. We ask if rule three apply, are there epsilons in all the first sets from this non-terminal, from this word to the end of the rule? Yes. Yes, yes there's a display name list, and we already saw, saw the display name list has an epsilon in its first set. So then we can add the follow set of display name list to the follow set of word. So we add the follow set of display name list, which, display name list, which is the left angle, bra uh, the angle bracket. Uh, and then we say, okay, does rule four apply? So yes, we add the first set of display name list to the follow set of word. Uh, we've already done that, so that won't change what we're calculating. We do it anyways. And then we say, okay, great. Oh. Uh, then we say, okay, so the follow set of word is, word is going to be followed by either an atom, a quoted string, or a less than symbol. Questions on that? Then we ask, are we done? No. No. We just calculate it again. Uh, so we go through and do this. And we say, wow, we got the same thing. Great. So does that mean we're done? Yes. Yes. I want a lot quicker. Good. All right. Okay, questions on... The follow sets? All right. So what are we doing all these calculations for, right? What are we, what are we trying to first, what are we trying to show? Yeah, the, there's a predictive parser, specifically we care about a uh, predictive recursive descent parser. Uh, so to use that, we have our rules, we have our first sets, and we have our follow sets. So what are the two rules for deciding if a if a grammar allows a predictive parser, somebody able to quickly go back there? Yeah. What's the first rule? No ambiguity. Oh, okay. so sorry. If you have a if you, when you calculate the first of a particular string, it shouldn't intersect with the first of another one. Like the not the terminal should be the same thing. So it should be unique. Right. So uh, the way. I, so yeah, there's two ways to think about it. I think it's like um, at the high level you're trying to go for there's no ambiguity yeah. between rules. So if you have, uh, in general, what it says is if you have some rule as a goes to alpha and a goes to beta, then it better be that the intersection of the first sets of alpha and beta is the empty set, right? So if you look here at this top rule, that would be that the first set of name address and the first set of address specification better be, the intersection there better be the empty set. Because if there's any overlap, then we, we won't know which rule to apply. We'll have to just guess and maybe backtrack. But we want to be predictive. We want to predict what the next, what rule to take just by looking at the first symbol in the alpha. Oh, so that's the first rule. Maybe remember what the second rule is? If there's an epsilon in the first of A, then the first of A can't be, cannot intersect with the follow of A. Right, so that is if, um, if an element can go to epsilon and produces nothing, then you better, it's once again about ambiguity, you better be able to figure out, do you parse A again, or did it go to nothing? And so the test there is, is the first set of A 
intersect with the follow set of A, they better be different. So you better know if something else is following you or if you're going to call yourself again. I think we'll see this in a second. So first thing, name address. So we got to look at all. So which rules here could possibly be ambiguous? Which non-terminals do we have to check for the first rule? Display name list, right? Because it's got two rules here. Well, address. address, name address, address specification, and word. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so the first set of name address intersected with the first set of address spec specification. What is it? Is it? So what's the first set of name address? So now we can actually write a predictive parser here. Uh, 
we have a question? So maybe you can see here that if we're, we're trying to parse the display name list, we can look at, peek ahead at the next token and say, what's the next token? Well, if it's in the first set of display name list, if it's an atom or a quoted string, then I know that it's, uh, uh, if it's an atom or a quoted string, then that means I know I'm choosing this word display name list again. Uh, but if it's in the follow set of display name list, if it's a left angle bracket, that means I'm done parsing my display name list. So I parse my display name list, I can't parse anymore, uh, because I know that that next symbol is an angle bracket and it's not going to parse and match any of the input. Questions? Okay. All right, now that we've calculated all this, now we can actually turn this, all of this, so this is actually all the information we need, the grammar, the first sets, and the follow sets, to write a parser for this language. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, and so kind of on each slide, we're going to take it step by step. Uh, we're going to show the important transition rules here. So we're going to start at the top. We're going to go top down. We're going to start with the rule, uh, with the address rule. And we're going to keep track of all relevant, kind of on the top will be all relevant uh, rules and first sets. So here we have uh, the first, we have the rule address goes to name address or address specification. We have some relevant first sets and some relevant follow sets. So just to kind of establish some standards that we're going to use in this class when we write our parsers and we, you're going to write parsers for your homeworks or exams. The way we're going to do this is we're going to define functions as parse underscore non-terminal. Where in this case, we're going to write the function parse underscore address. And so this function is responsible for parsing the address. So the very first thing we do is we want to get a token, right? So we, we want to look at the token and see what it is. So how are we going to be able to tell which of these two rules applies? Yeah. Yeah, so, so we're going to look at our, so we have two things here. We have the first set of name address, and we have the first set of address specification. So we can see, so there's a couple different things we can do, right? So A, we can look at the first set of address, and we can, we can know, hey, if it's not one of these symbols, then that's a parsing error. If it's a, a, a greater than symbol, then I know that this is not a valid address, right? Because it's not in the first set of address. What, I, what I'm parsing better either start with a dot atom at, a quoted string at, a less than symbol, an atom, or a quoted string. And then, so that's one thing we can do. The next thing we can do is we want to say, okay, which production rule do we want to call? So we check this token that we just read in with each of the first sets of those production rules. And remember, we've already proved that there is no intersection there. So we'll be able to tell exactly which rule to choose based on this token that we read in. So the first thing we're going to do, let's take the first one, right? So we're going to check if that token is in the first set of name address. Right, so what's in the first set of name address? Less than, less than simple, Adam, Adam quoted string, right? And you know, I very hope that everyone can turn this into code that looks very similar to this, right? We're checking if the T type is, so here I'm just, I'm just representing the non-terminal. This isn't, let's say it's not valid C code, but it's fine pseudo code for our purposes. So I'm checking, is this, is this token type, is it a less than symbol, is it an atom, or is it a quoted string? And uh, Okay, so, but if it is, so next I will want to check for the first set of address specification, but we want to fill out, so what goes inside of this, of this uh, if statement? So what does it mean when, we, when, we, when this condition is true? We know what? It means you know what rule to pick up. Right, we know which rule to pick. And we know we picked address, address goes to name address. Right, we know we're not parsing an address specification. We know we're parsing a name address. Uh, but, huh? Do you want to say something? Parse name address. 
Yeah, so parse name address. We're going to get to there, but first, what have we done with get token? Right, we've taken it from the input string. So this means when, if we called a parse name address, which is what we want to call, right? We want to call parse name address, but when parse name address gets there, it's going to want to read a token, but it's going to be misaligned because we've already read that token. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to unget that token, right? Put that token back so that name address starts from the start of the string. And then we're going to call parse name address. Right? And then that's going to do something. And then kind of by convention, this is the way I want to go, is, is I'm going to represent the do something with this parsing as printing out the production rule that we use. Uh, so here I'm going to pr print out address goes to name address. Uh, so this is what you should do also in your homework to specify that yes, I know that this is the production rule that we just parsed. And so parse name address is going to go do something, whatever, we don't care. And so that's in our turn. So, but what if the T type is not a less than symbol of atom or a quoted string? Then what do we check? We check for the first set of address specification, right? Which is dotted atom at and quoted string at. Yeah, exactly. So we check if the T type is dotted atom at or quoted string at. Then what do we do? Yeah, we're going to call unget token again, because remember, we don't want to actually consume this token. We just used it to determine which of the rules to, to uh, parse. And then we're going to call parse address specification. Good. And then we're going to print out, we're going to do whatever the result of our parsing is. Here, we're just going to print out that we did this rule. So what if it didn't match one of these five? So we check for five tokens, right? Parsing error. Parsing error, yeah. How would we know if the end of file was valid? Yeah. Yeah, address went to epsilon. Exactly. So if address went to epsilon and could be empty, then we could check for, then we would check for the end of file. And that would be a valid parsing. Uh, but because it's not, right, there is no epsilon in the first set of address, it means that we've got to be able to parse something. So, in this else statement, so we're going to use, this is the other convention we're going to use is syntax error, this function syntax error. So you can imagine just something you call that prints out, hey, there's an error in your syntax, like that you're, you can think of it as a compiler giving you an error when your program is invalid. Questions about this? No? Okay. We're going to go through all of these because there are tricky cases. So now we're going to look at name address. So we're going to actually just write the function of parse name address. Um, so here we have the first sets, follow sets. And what we're going to want to do is parse the name address. So right here we have two rules to choose from. Um, display name, angle address, or angle address. And so what's the first thing we're going to do? We're going to get the token, right? We're predictive. We want to parse and see. We want to peek one ahead, but we only ever want to look one ahead. Uh, and we're going to look and determine which rules to apply. Okay, so which is, so let's say I want to take the leftmost rule. What am I going to check for? Who's first set? What is it? Adam and quoted string. Where did those come from? The first set of what? Which one? First of display name. Of which? Of the display name. Of display name. Almost. First of display name angle address. The first of display name angle address, yeah. So that's, it. it's functionally the same, but there are, if there was an epsilon in display name, right, uh, then it wouldn't be the same. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're taking the first set of that whole production rule. So display name angle address. And so we're going to check Adam quoted string. And the very first thing we're going to do, unget the token, exactly. Put it back in the input string. And so now, what are we going to call? What do we want to parse? Display name. Yeah. Parse display name. Good. Parse. 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 Par
Our Tangle address, yes. Okay, so this is where, as you can see, we basically put these production rules. So we know we want to first parse a display name, and then we want to parse an angle address. Right, so that's why these calls call e follow each other. So parse display name, we're going to see it's going to go parse, do whatever it needs to do. And then when it comes back, the very next thing we better parse better be an angle address. Because we know, based on looking at the first sets, that this is the rule that we're following, right? We're following this rule. Name address goes to display name and angle address. Does everybody see why there's two calls to two different parse functions? Do we see where those parse functions came from? So 
It, it depends on what you're calling next. Because in this case, right, just name address goes to display name angle address. Right? There's no tokens you can think of in between name address and display name. Right? So display name is going to parse its things, and then uh, angle address is going to parse its stuff. I mean, yeah, you could do it with, like, you could do peak instead of uh, this uh, get token and unget token, but this is kind of the model we're standardizing around since everyone used it with their homework. Okay, so then we look at uh, display name. So display name here, right, doesn't have any alternatives. So it's display name goes to word display name list. Uh, here's the relevant information. So we're going to want to write the function parse display name. So we're first going to do what? Get the token, right? We first want to get the token because we want to say, well, is this a proper display name? Uh, so we first get the token, and then we're going to check the first set of, in this case, word display name list. And so what's in the first set of word display name list? Adam quoting string, exactly. Uh, so we're going to check that, and we're going to unget our token. And what are we going to parse here? Word. And parse display name list, this, exactly. And we're going to print out that we did that. What are we going to do if it's not an atom or a quoted string? Syntax error, right? Error. Even though there's only one production rule, we know if it's not an atom or a quoted string, then this is an error. So we have a syntax error. OK, let's see if I can, we'll, we'll get to, OK, this is a good example. OK, so display name list goes to word display name list or epsilon. We have our first and follow sets here. So we're trying to write the function parse display name list. What's the first thing we do? Get token. Get token. Good. Uh, so we're going to check the, le the left rule, the left statement here. So we're going to check the first set of word display name list, exactly. So we're going to check that. We know it's Adam and quoted string. We're going to check if it is. We're going to call unget token. We're going to call parse word. And then what are we going to call next? Parse display name list. Yeah, we don't care. It's just like any of the other ones. And then when that returns, we're going to say uh, display name list goes to word display name list. So this is where you get the recursive from, right? So we're a predictive parser because we're always just looking one token ahead and we're going to predict which rule to take. And we're recursive because we're going to continue calling these rules. We're going to recursively call these rules. Uh, so We've checked this, so that's one rule. But then what happens if it's an epsilon? What do we check? How do we know if it's like a valid, how do we know when to stop, right? Because this, you know, we need a terminating condition for this recursive call, yeah? Check the follow. Right, so check the follow set of this plain name list, right? So if we know if the next token's in our follow set, and it's not in our first set, then we know we're done. Uh, so we check the follow set of display name list, which is the less than symbol. So we say if the T type is uh, <coughs> the less than symbol, then we're going to unget the token, put it back. And we're, oh, actually, oh yeah. So why do we unget the token here? Because it's something else. Yeah, so it's something else. It's something that follows display name list. It's not our token, it's something else. But we know that it's a valid token that follows us because it's in the follow set. Uh, so then we, we print that we went to epsilon. And then finally, the else clause, we say syntax error because if it's not in our first set, and if it's not in our follow set, then it's definitely a bad token. Uh, okay, so we will continue here on Wednesday. Thank you.